The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 1st, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. If you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Send that off early, if you will. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed bag out there. We got some indices trading to the upside, some to the downside. To the downside is the Dow, 218 points, about six tenths percent, a quarter percent for the S&P or 12 points, seven tenths for the Russell, 15 points. Trendies are down eight tenths, under 33 points. To the upside, the semi's up one and a quarter percent, 62 points, and the NASDAQ is up 15 points, which is basically flat out there. Gold is up 18 bucks, with silver being up 9 cents. Lights we crude is up 80 pennies. Natural gas up 6 cents, and a 30 year treasury down nearly 2 points, printing out at 118.19. Our leaders in the clubhouse, well, that's not to the upside, that's to the downside. Give me a moment here. Don't know how Stevie changed that. Uh, point, point, point. Where's the point? Point losers. We want point gainers. We go point gainers. How about to the downside? It is Equinix that's leading our charge to the downside. Dollar wise, off 17 bucks, 2%. 15 uh, Toyotas down 10 bucks or 4%. Inspire Medical Systems, 10 bucks, 5%. Cintas down 10%. Uh, down 10 bucks, one and three tenths percent. To the upside, it is Super Micro, $43 a day, 4% move for it. Asmil Holdings, 39 bucks, 4%. Broadcom, 18 bucks. Mercado Libre, 12 bucks. KLA Corp, up 13 bucks. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin our day by taking a look at the equity future contracts. We'll switch over and take a look at the, well, first, actually, while I'm here, Let's just do this. Quick peek here. You can take a look at the daily time frame for the ES Mini. What do we know about it? We know that it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top at 53.2275. Now, quite frankly, you could get a, another confirmation of that today because you've got a key reversal bar already. We don't need that, but it would set up the next resistance level, uh, assuming that we do trade lower. Uh, so there'd be two resistance levels, 53.22, and today's high uh, would be at, uh, right now, it's at 53.33.50. Now, if we do close above 53.22.75, the ES Mini will lose that bearish reversal candle signal, and it would negate that TD9 count top. In the case of the NQ, doesn't look likely that that will happen, that being a... Uh, a uh, negation of that Rhodes Mint indicator top up at the 18709 level. But this has just really traded sideways out here. We haven't gotten through yesterday's low. We have gotten above yesterday's, what I say yesterday, I mean really Friday, uh, Thursday's high out there. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow has a Rhodes Mint indicator top as well. This is also a key reversal bar. So that too, just like the ES Mini, would generate a second uh, resistance level today's high. That's assuming that this candle formation sticks and that's up at 4358. It's 4316 that would negate that TD9 count top out. Uh, the Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The TD9 count top is going to go ahead and uh, complete today uh, for the uh, uh, for the Russell 2000. For, I'm, I'm sorry, I take that back. Right now, today, so what? Yeah, oh, actually, the, so the Rhodes, there's a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that formed and is still in place for March the 8th out there. 
and price on uh, th Friday, uh, Thursday's close was just uh, was just still below that 2146 level. Now today you can see we've exceeded that. This Rosemont indicator topping signal is still in place out here. We have a key reversal bar as well, much like we hit do on the uh, Dow out there. So that would set up a second resistance area unless you were to see a close above 2146. So I hope it didn't confuse anybody out there. Basically, my point is we still have tops daily wise in the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000 out there. So that's the da the daily time frame message says caution. This, that caution signal is really getting a little bit loud out there. If we take a look at spot volatility, which right now is trading above its 50-day exponential moving average, the 50-day is trading out at 1376. The spot uh, the the 50 days at 1376. The spot volatility at 1392. A close above 13. A close of 1376 is going to suggest that sellers are the ones that are now in control of the market. How about the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator? It's below zero. Now, it's been moving back and forth and back and forth, so I don't want to hang my hat on any reading here. But nonetheless, if price did close below the zero threshold level, today it's just below it's minus uh, three, basically, out there, uh, would also be a signal that sellers are getting ready to take charge. Now, if sellers get ready to take charge, where is price headed to? So that's the question, because we always want to understand where is support and resistance out there. Now, in a daily time frame, we were looking at some levels, uh, profile levels out there. We can take a look at both the daily and the weekly together, just to give us give ourselves a good view, because we really do have mixed signals out here not just is it a mixed market today we've got mixed signals as an example if you take a look at the es mini we've already covered that on the daily time frame straight below that oscillator and change line again a downside target would be 5257 turns out at 5257 it's also the top of the weekly profile so that's a pretty strong or could should be a pretty strong level of support if price gets down there watch that area what happens if that area fails well then we go to the next level the next level would really come from the weekly time frame chart which is that green oscillator oscillator and change line. You can see during this rally, once we cleared that oscillator and change line, which was on November 10th on a weekly basis, any pullbacks have found support at that line. Makes sense that if we're going to continue this rally into April and May, that on a pullback in the ES Mini would find support at that level. We don't even know if price is going to get down there just yet. But if it did, that area right now is printed out at 52.39. So those are your downside targets. We shared with you the reasons why if price is moving lower. Well, we know it is right now at the moment. And each of these still have those daily topping patterns out there. On the daily NQ, its target level, with price being below that oscillator and change line, would be 18,224. We can see you still have a TD9 count top that's in place out here on a weekly time frame. Price is trading with inside its profile levels, so its area of support is down at the 17,945 to 18,070 area. 18,224 would be the level to be watching. In the case in, ca in the case of the Dow Equity Future Contract (YEM), it still has a Rosemontum indicator top out there. Today would just be a secondary one, but a close below 40,000, even Stephen. 40,000 is the oscillator and change line tells us that price has lost momentum. If it's lost its momentum, where is it headed to? Where the first place to be paying attention to is going to be this recent swing point from April to uh, March of 26 out there. That swing point range is between a low of 39,657 and a high of 39,822. If the Dow Equity Future contract closed below 39,657, then 39,314 would be its target. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We'll uh, go back and take a look at the uh, indices, equity futures. Let's move on to a couple of requests that have come in thus far. The first one is from David H. in uh, Panama City. He wants to take a look at ticker symbol ALB. Is that LB Marl out there? That's what we've got up on our screen. It is. And David's in the 130 calls. So let's take a look at what we know here about LB Marl. Let's take a look at the daily time frame. Let's open it up, see what we see out here. We see a road momentum indicator bottom. It was tested. Uh, this formed back on the, it actually formed on February 6th. That was a confirmation. It was low February 5th. That swing point had volume of about 3.8 million shares. It was tested with 19 million shares, tested and rejected. Boy, that is a, a strong area of support. So tested and rejected with volume. The very next day, the volume on this was 15 million shares, still volume as it did that retest out there. We haven't been back down there. So you want to just potentially be careful, knowing that you do have that high volume low from March the 5th. What we have right now, David, is price on uh, Wednesday was able to get into its daily profile. On Thursday, it uh, confirmed that it, uh, it, 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 it liked that level, that level being above 126.83. That area has been tested so far this morning. Ideally, you will see this instrument still trade above at least its green oscillator and change zone, which is below profile support. Currently, that's at 124. 40. If you were to see a close below that, could be signaling that we just move back to the recent lows or that we get back towards that high volume low out there. So keep that in mind. Really watch that 126.83 level. We'll take a look at the intraday chart, see if we see anything out there. If, in fact, price can hold the 126.83 level, it should make its way up to its sell zone. The sell zone, which is created by the bearish structure daily profile, is between the range of 137.74 at 143.19. So that becomes a likely target as long as price certainly reigns above 126.83. 
and and uh, and that green oscillator and change line below that. Right now, printed out at one twenty seven forty. That's the message of the daily time frame. Now you're in the uh, calls that expire this week, so the weekly may not be that helpful to you. On the other hand, maybe it is. And what's that? If we take a look at this weekly time frame chart, we have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That that pattern was formed or was confirmed on February twenty third when there was a hammer candle. That hammer candle has also established the bottom of its weekly profile, which is at one twelve eighty seven. The center is at 112.87. That is a strong level of support that if closed below on a weekly basis says we're heading lower. Now what looked good on Thursday last week was the fact that price closed above the top of that profile at 130.80. We're back below it now. So we can't say that there was a profile change in trend until Friday of this week, and that would require a close above the top of that profile. And again, that number is 130.80. So if we're trying to understand why did price on a daily time frame basically stop where it did, we have our answer. It is where those weekly sellers reside up at that one. Again, that number was 130.80. I think it was, uh, no, one, yeah, 130.80 is the uh, number out there. So you might want to kind of keep that in the, in the feather of your cap out there with regard to your options trade out there. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, all that I see out here, well, when I say all that I see, maybe there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that's been completed. So let's take a look at that real quickly. I'm just going to move that A to B point over to the C level. No, it didn't really complete that. Yeah, so we can't say that. So the monthly chart, all that I can share with you there, David, is that price is consolidating with inside his profile. Let's take a look at some intraday charts out here. So as price was dealing with the top of the weekly profile, what was generating out here was a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And that was a bearish engulfing candle that completed at 10 a.m. Price also closed right below the bottom of its bullish structured 30-minute profile. And now price was dealing with the support area of where it broke out from on a 30-minute basis. We saw one close below, 127.27, but the very next bar got above it. So we don't have a change in trend signal on a 30-minute basis. But if we do get two close below, 127.27, you'd have your answer. And your answer would be that price is headed lower out there. On a 30-minute time frame, that next price projection will be down at 119.64. I'm not saying that's where it's going. We'd want to take a look at like the 65-minute chart and some others. But that's what we see right there. So if you're trying to understand why did price find resistance where it did this morning, where it did on Thursday, it's really because of where those sellers are at on the weekly time frame. So David, H, I hope that that provided you with the information that you were looking for. If not, go ahead and write back and I'll make sure that I get that out to you. We've got a uh, David that wants to take a look at lean hogs inside the tiger's den. And inside the tiger's Dan, uh, folks, which you should be a member as well. If we take a look at lean hogs out here, you can see that price is uh, negating a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, as long as price closes above the high of April 18th, March 18th, that's at 103.475. As long as price closes above that, that topping pattern gets negated. Now, we can also see that there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. My eyes say that this retracement from B to C is less than a 0.618 retracement. So odds now favor that this will do or could do or should do more than a one-to-one. -one. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection is approximately the 105 level, 104, maybe 70, somewhere along those lines. Nice wide-ranging bar that's getting up into that area. A to B equals CD patterns do not end on wide ranging bars out there. So it doesn't look like even if we get up there that this is a sell the D point pattern. What you'd be looking for, what you'd be waiting for is some type of bearish reversal candle on the daily time frame. Now, on a weekly time frame, this has a TD9 count top. And that top is at 103.475. If on Friday, price closes below that, this tells us that lean hogs are getting ready to rally even further out there. And that would go along with the idea that uh, price will do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. So the level to watch at week's end throughout the week is going to be that 103.475. The top of the weekly profile, by the way, is up at... 103.475 as well. So that becomes your real key level. But what it looks like to Stevie is that hogs want to continue to rally further. Let's take a look at its consecutive days up and down out here, see where we're at on its dance steps. And it looks like a pretty bullish market to me. Why? Because all of the moves back have been for two consecutive days out here, with the exception of one three consecutive day move back into March 21st out there. So lean hogs look, looks like it's going to get a little bit more costly for bacon. 
out there. So hope that helps you out, uh, both Davids. And uh, if not, write back to me, and I'll get you the information you're looking for. Dan, inside the Tiger's Den, would like to take a look at ticker symbol SPRO. SPRO is, drum roll, Johnny Sparrow Therapeutics. So what do we got going on with regard to Sparrow Therapeutics? Well, one, this formed a roads meant to indicator top. It took price right back to support. And support was the buy zone, established by that bullish structure daily profile. The buy zone was in the range of 1.64 to 1.66. Now we have price trading above resistance. It's above the resistance of its daily profile, and a close above 178 today will be a close above the resistance of its oscillator and change line. That oscillator and change line is green. A close above a green oscillator and change line is a bullish move. In other words, for the daily time frame, price would in essence be in a bullish breakout mode. However, it still has that bearish and it still has that. Uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now that Rhodes momentum indicator top out here would get negated with a close. Well, it's, it looks like it's going to get negated today. All it really needs is a close above 1.78. Well, we're at 1.79 right now. So kind of watch that, Dan. Um, if price close above that, that says we head back to its highs. And what the weekly chart would say, where you're really headed back to is 183 to 186 out there. Dan, that's what I've got when I take a look at SPRO, that is Sparrow Therapeutics. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50%, and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, uh, the U.S. dollar index, we talked about this during the uh, 11 a.m. update. Uh, it has achieved uh, the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD price target out there. And its retracement is suggesting it's going to do more than that. Now, we're taking a look at the three currency pairs that represent 83.1% of its holdings out there. So we don't need to take a look at the other uh, uh, the other um, uh, 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 currency pairs, the, the yen, the uh, corona, and the uh, franc out there. Well, we take a look at the... Euro US dollar chart, though, this is what I want to bring to your attention is that today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count, and price is approaching its breakout level. That's at 1.0732. So there's a chance, a pretty decent chance, that we would get a TD9 count bottom pattern that forms between today and Wednesday of this week. If, in fact, we get that, we should then see a rally. Now, that rally would take us up towards that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1.082. We're at 1.074. So it would be a pretty decent rally out there uh, should that unfold. So we want to pay attention. We want to keep close attention to the euro. We'll look at it tomorrow. We'll put up the intraday charts as well just to see if we get any kind of signals out there. Now, the, this is, right now, the dollar's got a perfect storm for it to continue to rally out there. Why is that? Well, we've got 83% of the currency pairs that are suggesting so. So the euro is headed lower. That puts strength, in, strength inside the U.S. dollar index. The yen is headed higher. That puts strength inside the U.S. dollar index out there. Uh, and it's it, it does have a TD9 count top with price finance support at that oscillator and change line. And if price were to close above, the high from uh, March 27th, it negates that TD9 count top. That level to be watching for the yen is 151.971. If it closes above that, it says it's going to further weaken and the U.S. dollar index would get stronger. The Great British Pound did have a buy the D point pattern. Uh, it had that when it formed a bullish piercing candle back here on April, March the 25th. Price was never able to really do much. It never even got up to the oscillator and change line, which is red. Uh, so not a good signal. But it still has an A to B equals CD to the downside, uh, likely targeting its most recent uh, swing low from back on February 5th. And that's at 1.2519. If price closes below that, we'd likely continue to head lower. But you'd be watching for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern out there. So we want to be on look out for these three currency pairs, see what they do. But right now, they're suggesting that the U.S. dollar index should continue to strengthen out there. Okay, let's uh, move from here and let's go take a look at. How did that work out? Radio show daily. Uh, okay, the euro and pound. There we go. Let's go take a look at a request, uh, a couple of requests that came in from LB. So give me a moment. We'll get over to those charts here. Okay, and uh, Lee would like to take a look at uranium. URA is the uh, ticker symbol. This is the ETF, I believe. Uranium URA is traded above the top of its uh, daily profile. It closed above it on Thursday. It's traded above it today. It's trading above a potential resistance level, which was the high from March 8th that generated a bearish engulfing candle out there, and that was up at the 29.46. So if uh, URA, Lee, Close above 2946 today. It's signaling to you and I that it wants to make a move up towards its TD9 count breakdown level. That's what the daily chart says, 3142. But before we can reach that final conclusion, we need to understand what's going on on the time frames above. And there we take a look at the weekly chart where price has been doing. It's been consolidating with inside its weekly profile. That's been in the range from 2755 Lee up to the top of that profile, which is at 2983. So even though I gave you a number here on the daily time frame, and it was accurate with regard to the daily time frame at 29.46, what we now know is you really need to see price trade above the top of its weekly profile. So in order to get giddy, 
We need to see a close. We need to see price trade above 29.83 out there. If we do that, then that suggests moving back to that 31.42 level. Now, what we like about the monthly time frame chart, which, by the way, is neutral at the moment, is that it formed a TD9 count and rose momentum indicator top. Now, that's not necessarily why we like it, but what we like is that when you form a top, the question is, how does support handle the move lower? In this case here, it was a true out rejection. It had a buy zone on a monthly time frame. That buy zone in that form last month is between 2589 and 2701. It also has a green oscillator and change line, which last month was tested and rejected. Now, the resistance area here, that's a bullish structured profile. We are above last month's high. That suggests that URA wants to run to 3036. Again, it's all dealing with 2983 first, then 3036, 3036 would be second. Followed by that would then be 3142 out there. So, LB, I hope that helps you out with regard to URA. You had a twofer. Your twofer was NXE is the next ticker symbol. So NXE is, I don't know, but we're going to find out. Well, what it's doing is trading into a prior swing point. And that swing point had volume. So this is Next Gen Energy. It's a swing point from February 2nd. There was 5 million shares that were done that day, Lee. Well, guess what? You're already up with 4.5 million shares. So price is moving into that swing point. The high of that swing point is $8.31. So far today, we have been up to... $8.32. So even though it looks like we have a rejection at the moment, it's going to be a rejection with volume. It looks like price will close inside that swing point. Price is likely to go retarget that high. Now, if it closes above that high, different story. If it closes above that high, it negates its wave number seven pattern out there. In fact, it already has negated that because we've traded above that today. So that's no longer a high that we're paying attention to out here. Uh, so it's just really about that swing point. Um, what else? Well, so it's, you know what it is? It's the monthly time frame LB that's uh, that you're really dealing with that's of most importance and that is a TD9 count roads momentum indicator top and the top of the profile is that high and that top of that profile is at eight dollars and I'm sorry is that eight dollars and 31 cents so the key area for NXE is going to be 831 the daily says I'm pushing into it with volume so that's a good sign the weekly chart we're too early into the week to know whether we are or we aren't but the weekly chart is bullish the weekly chart is actually in a bullish breakout mode because price is trade above the top of its profile and that green oscillator and change line those are two very bullish conditions so now it's really up to the monthly time frame chart and the question is can this negate that TD9 count top and that's up at four dollars and 94 cents out there i don't know the answer to that question i'm not seeing anything on a 30 minute time frame to suggest that it can't of course anything can happen out there but resistance is resistance until it fails that resistance can become support this is the 30 minute chart by the way for nxc we don't see really any kind of a bearish uh, signal there at the moment so lb thanks so much for writing in much appreciated let me check to see if we have any other requests been kind of a quiet morning out there um, the answer is I don't see one. I don't see anything inside the Tiger's Den. If inside the Tiger's Den you had made a request, uh, please retype that in because I clearly then have overlooked that. So without those requests, what do we want to go take a look at next out here? Rum. Okay, Piper Paul would like to go have a little bit of rum. Is that going to be dark rum, light rum? I'm not a rum drinker, by the way. I don't actually drink alcohol other than uh, sake and wine and beer. I guess that's alcohol. I don't drink hard alcohol. I haven't had hard, hard alcohol uh, pretty much since I was, uh, you know, it's been 19, maybe it was 19 years old. Yeah, how about that? Anyway, Steve Rhodes with TFN. We come back from this break. We're going to go take a look at rum. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. 
Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. It's time to get ready to rumble because we're taking a look at RUM. That is actually Rumble Inc. out here trading out at $7.19 as we speak. It's been consolidated with inside its daily profile. Its level of support is at 668 to the downside resistance 892. Now, this informed a Roads Momentum indicator top. It did that on the trading day, confirmed that pattern on March the 14th. That says not until price closes above the high of that pattern. The high of that pattern is up at 812. Will you be out of Dodge? Now, the good thing is that prices move lower uh, so far as held support, although it hasn't really tested support at the 668 level. Um, but trading below uh, Friday's, uh, Thursday's low, that is a uh, you know, pretty good chance that that's where price is headed to is 668. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, price here has formed a new profile uh, last week. And that profile is between $6.52 at, at support. Actually, you have a buy zone, 652 to 711, Piper and resistance up at 831. But we can also see 859 is its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That's on a weekly base where you would need to see price close above to suggest that this thing wants to move higher. Turns out that the monthly time frame chart, Piper also is consolidating with inside its profile. The range there is between 412 at support and 808 as resistance. So what is RUM doing overall? You got just simply consolidation with inside profiles. Uh, looks to me like what RUM wants to do is perhaps get back that 668 level. What you don't want to see is a close below 645. If you do, well, then price will go target 582. And if price close below 582, you're headed perhaps all the way back down to its recent lows out there. But that's not what we see, but that's what you would be on the lookout for because right now it looks like price wants to head lower. Let's take a quick peek at that 30-minute um, time frame chart see what kind of signal we have out here if anything and we have a buy the d point pattern so if we take a look at that this is on the 30 minute time frame we'll draw it had a td9 count top and here's your a to b line we'll just simply go ahead and move this over give me a moment 
We'll move this over to the uh, C point out there. It looks like it's about right there. You can see that was uh, confirmed just in that last half hour, about 14 minutes ago at 1130. You got that bullish engulfing candle. Now there's a new profile that's going on here inside of rum. So what you want to watch here, Piper, now we've gone down to the play by play, the intraday chart. You were inside a it would be very slightly bearish in structure. So you're going to have two resistance points to clear out here. The first one is at $7.27. If price can close above that, the next one is at $7.41. If price can close above that, price should move up towards the Sausage and Chains line. Currently printed at $7.66, but that number is going to change if price, in fact, were to rally out there. So why don't you use kind of like $7.75? 75 or so uh, as a, a target, 780 as a, a price target. But first price is going to get through the, the sellers uh, at the 727 and 741 area. That's coming from your 30-minute time frame. So I hope that helped you out with regard to let's get ready to rumble. Rumble Inc. Ticker symbol is R-U-M out there. Um, let's take, so no other requests that I see. Quick peek. Let me see. Let me make sure. Let me get back down. Uh, last time you had liquor was in 1973, uh, 18. Yeah, you know, what happened for me was, I'll tell the story, it's not a pleasant story. Uh, I was, it was a, uh, I went to a private uh, college for the last uh, two years. First year, I moved away from home when I was 17. Not, nothing was bad at home, just simply that was my time to, uh, to leave. I graduated from high school and was gone on a September birthday. It was, I've been on my own ever since then. And, uh, 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 breezed through community college and I went to this small, very small private school out there. And uh, when I say small, it was 800 students. I pretty much went at, uh, it was a night school. I worked during the day, you know, on my own. That's what you have to do. Uh, but so uh, the first class, one of the first classes we had was a communications class. The entire grade was based upon a random group of uh, five people. Uh, the first day that you kind of, you know, you pick who you're sitting around or what have you. And uh, on a presentation, a presentation that you would give. And we chose as a topic, I chose as a topic, uh, I suggested as a topic, uh, let's do mnemonics. Mnemonics, if you don't know what those are, that's using different tools to be able to remember things. And uh, and I, and everybody was kind of like, yeah, that would be pretty cool. And I said, well, I'd like to, if I'm going to learn anything, if we're going to spend you know, a number of months on this. I'd like to be able to learn how to remember people's names out there. So I got that as a task. Anyways, to make a long story even longer, uh, we did this seminar and it just turned out it was really great. I mean, they had us do it for a couple other classes, which we enjoy doing out there. But we went out to celebrate and it was the weekend before finals. I actually had a full scholarship to this uh, college. And uh uh, so we went out to this bar. We went out to this restaurant. It was quite a ways away from my house. And one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, students was good friends with the bartender. And they were bringing over everything. I mean, every kind of uh, alcohol that you could possibly think of. And I was mixing it. We were having a good time. And I ended up getting so sick that I wasn't able to actually make it to the final exams out there. I mean, I basically I had uh, uh, alcohol poisoning. So that was enough for Stevie. I'm a, I'm a one and done kind of a uh, guy out there. So uh, in any event, that's the story behind why Stevie doesn't drink hard alcohol. And I go pretty light when it comes to the uh, wine and the sake out there. Okay, enough of that. Maybe that was enough time for, yeah, that was enough time for me to take a look. Oh, somebody wants to take a look at NVIDIA, then Bonds and ARM. I guess I shouldn't have been talking for so long. So let's go take a look at NVDA. Let's see what uh, we can do here. Let's get all this done within about uh, four minutes or so. Actually, three minutes to go. So when we take a look at NVIDIA, you still have that Roadsman to Indicator top. You have a new profile that is formed out here. That new profile shows on a daily time frame a buy zone of 885 to 8908. Uh, we're leaving off the pennies here out there. So that's it's trading right now into its buy zone. A resistance is up really at either 944.15 or where that Roadsman to Indicator bearish engulfing candle occurred on March the 8th, and that's up at 974 even Steven. The weekly time frame chart just simply shows a consolidation with inside its profiles. Is that a sell the D point pattern out there? It is. So it's got a sell the D point pattern established by that bearish shooting star the week that ended March the 8th out there. If we take a look at um, the monthly chart, as bullish as can be. But you want to watch support. You're trading into the buy zone. If price were to close below 885.37, we'd make a move down to about 849. That's the weekly oscillator and change line. A close below that, we'd be looking at 755.94. So that is NVIDIA. Let's go take a look at AR, uh, the ZB. So let's take a look at the 30 year treasury. That is the June contract out here. Uh, let's get that up on our screen. That is for Mike. And. 
Uh, oh, no, that is for John. Mike wants to take a look at ARM, which we will definitely be able to get to. If we take a look at that 30-year Treasury, right now price is trading below profile support. So that is suggesting to Stevie that what price should do is target its recent swing low. That's from the trading session of March 18th. And that's anywhere between uh, the 118.03 to 118.28 level. We're already inside that swing point. Okay, so it closed in, but closed below 118.28 today, and it closed below the bottom of its daily profile. It's going to suggest either run for that swing low, that swing low 118.03, or its breakout level at 117.25. That's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frame out there, Mike. So I hope that that helps you out. Let's take a look at it was ARM. This is for I'm sorry, that was for John C. Don't worry, I'll I'll get it all straightened out here. Uh, so when we take a look at ARM out here, uh, Mike, price is also trading inside its bullish structured buy zone. And that's between the range of 124.36 to 127.34. If price were to close below 124.36, actually what I would say is if price were to close below the center of its daily profile, so 124.36 will do the job. If price closed below that, the next downside price target becomes 105.60. That would be the bottom of its weekly profile. So that's what I see when we take a look at ARM right now. Watch 124.36 at support. 133.31 is the resistance level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50%, and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just send a promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome 
back, uh, folks. We got a couple requests that came in. The first one from Nicholas wants to know: Is it time to get back into natural gas? And that's a great question. On on Thursday last week, Nicholas, what the natural gas daily time frame contract did was generated a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did that by generating a bullish piercing candle. What transpired today, though, is a new profile has formed. So right now is not the time because price is up at resistance. The resistance is 1.857. If natural gas can close above that, then that gives us a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It gives us a profile change in trend. And that uh, would then I would say, yeah, it could be worth the uh, shot. Now, the weekly time frame needs a bullish reversal candle this week. Doesn't matter what it's doing on Monday, by the way, it would be a bullish engulfing candle as we speak right now. So closing above 1.857, increase the odds that the weekly time frame would also generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. The monthly charts in a world of its own, it's not really helping us. It's not giving us any kind of a buy signal out there. So watch $1. And 85 cents, 1.857 out there, um, and, uh, and that will help to answer that question. So, Nicholas, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Ron is interested in a long-term position inside of Costco. Costco, is this was this at its all-time high? Let me see here. It, it looks like it most certainly was. What I was looking at, did you see that island reversal candle on the daily time frame? So here's the deal with island reversals. It doesn't get much bear, more bearish than that. Now, what Price did out here, um, and this is we're talking about the island reversal formed on, well, really formed within three days, March 6th through March 8th. But it was that March 7th day where we gapped to the upside, looked like we were headed to the moon. And then that very next trading session, maybe that was after earnings, it said, what moon are you talking about? Well, when it was headed south, we know which moon that was. But price did find support at 718.28. You're looking for a long-term position here. You've got a TD nine count top on the weekly. And you've got uh, – and everything looks pretty good on the monthly chart. But I would say – Costco is going to pull back to the 718.28 level. Below that, 687.07, maybe even 640 out there. And the monthly chart has 676 written all over it. Now is not the time to get into Costco, Ron. But keep paying attention to the chart. But my goodness, it is really bearish on the daily. And the weekly ain't so good either. Folks, have a magnificent Monday. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you on Terrific Tuesday. Take care. Be safe out there.